Hello guys, um, this is a continuation of the previous video and we're talking about the leg module and uh, since last video we, we, we decided that it would have been a good idea to start introducing you know, um, the ability to snap the controls to the bones but not necessarily orient them to the bones and um, because of that, today we're going to start uh, talking about it, how can we do this. And today we're going to start improving a little bit um, the solvers. But today specifically we're going to speak about the DFK solver for now. And we're going to build upon that. So if I go back, so first of all, let's notice that I just generated a different skeletal mesh. Um, um, it, and it includes both the legs and the arms and the reason is eventually I want to always have this available because I'm changing the solvers the solvers both manipulate legs and arms so I, I will always have the arm there to double check that I'm not breaking anything so this is why it's in there we're gonna talk about the leg but, but also I wanna constantly go back to the arm and see that everything works not today though so we spoke about the new, this node that is called Project New Parent, which acts like a parent constraint uh, with offsets if you if you want to. And let's see how can we use it. If we go back to the, the module that we discussed last time and we open it, we open the solver FK, we can see that the solver FK, uh, the way I built it originally, um, was with, you know, where you can specify the names let me see. Uh, a solver FK will, would have names in it. But the first improvement I want to make is that this solver FK was specifically designed to work with an arm or a three limb thing. But to be honest, a solver FK can be made more generic to work on any any number of joints and controls. So this is what we're going to do as well as other stuff. So instead of relying and looping through a specific hard coded amount of bones, instead of using names we're going to switch to collections and the reason is so the user can specify an arbitrary amount of bones and controls of course assuming that the amount is the same because we want to have one control per bone in this specific instance so let's see how can we do that so if i go into my blueprint you can see i deleted everything everything else i want to analyze this uh, because we're going to um, change the graph a little bit again with the idea that we're going to slowly build up and simplify but also this should allow us to see how much uh, important is the ability to reuse things so i want you to notice let me put this under utilities which is the way it used to be the the way let me open a solver fk the first thing that you may notice is that instead of names we have now a collection for the bones and then a collection for the controls and on top of that we have additional booleans to define certain things some of them we're very familiar with there is the setup mode and the follow mode and this is to allow the FK to follow whatever kinematics is is in there the new one is orient to controls let's see what this does we have a collection of bones, a collection of controls. The first thing is a sequence. The first thing that goes through is a branch. Are we in setup mode? And it's checking this condition. Are we in setup mode? Yes, let's go. Are we, do we want to orient the controls to the bones? So it's checking this value here. And this is where we're going to start talking about this simple function that I've made, which is based on what I said in the uh, literally the previous video. Anyway, we want to do we want to orient the controls with the bones? Yes. Then we loop through the bones. This this uh, this collection. If I move this node here, this collection is the bone. Give me every single bone, and in this case, the bones are. Let's see. Uh, it are these four one two three four I'm selecting the right one just so we can see but it's it's on, on the left in this specific case mm, where are they um, there we go these four bones 
give me those four bones and also at the same index give me the controls so in this case I've prepared these four controls one two three four if I want them to be oriented to the bones this is exactly what, what was happening in the previous graphs you know in all the previous videos I'm getting the transform of the bone I'm getting the corresponding control and I'm snapping and getting this transform and I'm saying the new offset of the control is at the same position of the bow. So let's see if I jump in the main graph and say let's see what happens. If I say orient controls you can see that now these controls are perfectly aligned with the bones. Okay? If I don't say that and you can see here uh, that the rotation is basically perfectly aligned to the bow. Okay? We have rotation values here. Not in, in, we have a rotation value here. All the other rotation are zero because the bone happens to be at zero. Um, what happens if I say or in controls to none? You can see that basically they are aligned perfectly aligned, not with the bone, but rather with the world. So all the rotations here are at zero, and if in and if I move any axis, we only have one one axis that, that moves. So this is. It would be more um, uh, helpful when we talk about the IK, but I wanted to implement this into the FK solver just for consistency. So let's go back to solver FK. Uh, we we either snap them to the bones, or if I select false, we only want we loop through the bones, we get the controls but we only want them to be snapped to the translation. So rather than doing that, which is what's happening above, it's the, it's the full transform, so it's rotation scale and translation. I'm only snapping translation and I'm simply setting the rotation to be zero. And because of zero, would be aligned to the world. So setup mode, do we want them to be, we are in setup mode, do we want them to be oriented to the controls? Yes true false no and then in the forward solve we're simply saying let's see we we basically executed this for the first pass we said true false true false good this is this is the setup mode we are not in setup mode what happens do we need to follow or not follow and this again is the same mechanism that we used in the past to switch between kinematics so we have are we following then yes then please um, connect the the bones the bones are driving the the controls but here we can start seeing a new a new function but we'll see that in a minute so this function here is nothing else than a, a wrapper function of the project to the project to new parent node that I described in the previous video so are we in follow mode? Yes, then I want each bone to drive each control, but not through a direct connection, but rather through simple projection. Why? Because I want them to follow in whatever position they are in, uh, not, mm, but, but, not, but not following them as if they were oriented like the bones, because we cannot assume that these controls have been originally um, oriented like the bones. So this, this node here would work either way if in the setup we have oriented them or not. That's why this is, this is different from the previous example. Now this will take care to uh, constrain the control to the bone in whatever orientation the, the control has been set up uh, uh, originally. So are we in follow mode? Yes, so the control will follow the bone. Are we in, uh, in? Are we not in follow mode? If we are not in follow mode, then these are the controls, and we are projecting the controls to the bone. So the difference between these two is that the input collection here. If I take my my graph, the input connection here. These are the bones, and these are the controls. Okay, so it's just. It's just that that's the only difference. 
Now let's have a look at what's going on here. What is this, this, this simple projection? Well, simple projection is very simple. Remember, in the previous video we said it looks like we're duplicating a lot of information. It is true, although all that duplicated information, it's very helpful when you're trying to define different spaces. And this simple function, I'm making this function simply so I can have one node in, the, in, the, in my solver. So it's very simple to read. You can read this as parent constraint with offset, basically. And um, what it does, it takes a master and a setup as new and old parent. So it, we can compute based on these, the new, the new matrix. And then the slave, which is the child. The slave bo go goes both in, in child here. Sorry, in, in the slave goes as a child, but also as a set transform. So you can see this line here if I highlight it. See slave and child here. Then I also added the option to propagate, you know, in the set transform you always have the option to propagate to, to children just for you know, consistency of how what this node does. And then the function simply returns. So what this does, in essence, is that it constrains the slave to the master preserving an offset. And why, again, we want to preserve the offset because we don't know uh, at the very beginning if the, if the bones have been oriented to the, sorry, if the controls have been oriented to the bones or not. So in the rig graph, you can see that the, the main rig graph, the high level, in the previous example, how our main rig graph was very complex, it had a lot of things. I removed all of those because basically with this new solver, we're going to rebuild this graph slowly. Oh my goodness. Um, and But here for now, I'm just triggering solver FK in the setup event, is in setup mode, I'm orienting the controls, and in the forward solve, I'm simply running it, the same thing, in not in setup mode. These two nodes are the collections. So in here you can see that these are the controls and all the controls are going into the controls and all the bones are going into the bones. The result is that um, I, I'm set up in the FK controls that get snapped to the proper bone position. In this specific instance, they are oriented to the bones. And then in the forward solve, I am moving I am moving the, the bones with the controls. And usually in FK, I, I like to have the, the controls aligned to the bones. This is not true for the IK. We will see that in another video that's coming. So if I untick this, we saw that the controls are not aligned to the bones, but rather to the world. But in theory, this should still work. And the reason why this still works, this connection is still preserved, is because here, oops, not this one, here we have used the, the project to new parent rather than a set, a, a get and set transform. I hope that makes sense. So this is, this was the video about improving the FK solver to be a little bit more generic. So the first thing we did is like we switched, instead of hard coding names in it, in the where is it in my solver FK like it, we did at the beginning? This was only taking care of a chain FK that was made up by three bones and three controls. But we can do better than that. We can make it more generic. So the first thing I've made is like it's not just a fixed amount. It's any amount of bones, any amount of controls. And this so this is one way to improve it. And the second way to improve it is that we enable the option or into controls. So we always have the option to orient the controls to the bones or, or not. And the third improvement is that we simply wrote a projection function only for a readability kind of thing. And this projection function, I'm going to reuse that everywhere.